many, many people who grew alienated from politics as usual who have found hope again in Barack Obama, and they cast this as a good thing. It's always kind of strange when you walk into the convention centers. Today I was just in the, is it the Coke or the Pepsi? The Pepsi Center. So it's hard to keep all the, the brands straight. It's sort of like Barack Obama is like a NASCAR now. He's going to have a logo on every possible part of it. And John McCain is going to wear an American flag, but it's going to be shaped as a Nike swoosh. It's, it's the new evolution. And they're spending $50 million just in federal money alone on the, the so-called security operation here. I'm sure many of you who are out in the streets today saw just a small portion of it when Ron Kovic led people that, to the gates and actually blocked access and shut down journalists from going into the convention center to get their 18th yeah. and so so The reason I bring all of this up is because what we're seeing here in Denver, and as we are going to see in St. Paul, is a microcosm of how this war operates and how this society operates. The corporations are in total control. The corporations are driving the agenda. When it comes to war and political conventions, there is not a Democratic Party and a Republican Party. There's a corporatist party, which represents both of those constituencies. And as much as the rhetoric of the Obama campaign is about hope and change, he put the nail in the coffin of any honesty to that statement when he selected Joe Biden as his running mate. Joe Biden is not just one of those Democrats who now turns around and says, oh, I made a mistake in my vote to authorize the war. Some won't even go, go that far to admit that their vote was a mistake. But for Biden to simply end his involvement with saying, well, it was a mistake and now I'm going to join Barack and we're going to be critical of the war, is to whitewash his entire history in cheerleading this war. You see, Joseph Biden was the chair of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee in 2002. The Democrats were in control of the Senate at the time that the invasion and occupation of Iraq was supposed to be, or supposedly being, debated. Now, Joe Biden refused to call any witnesses to testify at those crucial hearings that he chaired that would say anything outside of the parameters that were defined as such bomb the hell out of Iraq or bomb them and invade them. Those were the parameters set by Joseph Biden in the Senate. A lot of people are deeply angered. A lot of people are getting disaffected with a Barack Obama. A lot of people, because why? Because he came out, like Jeremy just said, this is not an anti-war candidate. He wants to send 10,000 more troops to Afghanistan. He has threatened nuclear weapons against Iran repeatedly. He's threatened to go in unilaterally against Pakistan. That's not an anti-war candidate. He voted for Bush's FISA bill to cover up, to legalize massive spying of the American population and to cover up and to cover up and render retroactive immunity to everybody who broke the law in the Bush administration and in the telecom to cover up so the people will never know how far that crime went. This is a man who's come out and said he wants to escalate increase expand Bush's faith-based program. This is not somebody who's taking us. We have a move towards theocracy in this country, and he wants to expand the faith-based program. We have a fascist assault on women's reproductive rights, the right to abortion, the right to birth control. And he's out there saying what? We have to reduce abortions. We have to make common ground. He's featuring Bob Casey, a fanatic, anti-choice, anti-abortion candidate, in the halls of the DNC this week. There is a reason people are growing disaffected, and frankly, it's a good thing. There are many, many people who grew alienated from politics as usual, who have found hope again in Barack Obama, and they cast this as a good thing. This is not a good thing. People are right to get disaffected. The question is not how do we get them to believe and how do we use our anti-war credentials to make Barack Obama more palatable. The question is how do we go out to people and tell them the truth? about what it's really going to take, about the fact that he is not going to stop this program. Maybe he's different in some flavors or some varieties than McCain. I'm not contesting that, but it is about how to run an empire. That's what he's auditioning to do. And it's time for people to confront. And I think this is a reality. We do not bridge this gap 
by going with the grain and appealing to the hope that he's capturing in people. We deal with this by going in the face of that, against the grain, and telling people the truth that they need to hear. Obama does not represent the change you need. He represents the change the system will allow you to believe in. Thank you.